So I already made a rather lengthy video deriving Euler's formula and showing how it, it allows us to represent complex numbers with polar coordinates in a nice way, right? We can write a number as x plus i y, or we can write it as r e to the i theta, taking advantage of the fact that e to the i theta is equal to cos theta plus i sine theta. And just to remind you of the geometry of all of this, that's a bad drawing. We're in one note, we can do better. There we go. Actually, right here. Okay, so if there's our complex number z, then this angle is theta, the length of this vector is r, there's its x coordinate, and there's its y coordinate, right, like that. Okay, so that's really the most important reason we have Euler's formula and the reason we mention it in a complex analysis class. But there are some fun little applications of Euler's formula, and I just want to go over a couple here in this video. You can actually prove interesting trigonometric identities using Euler's formula. So if you if you had trouble remembering things like the addition formula and so on, you don't want to keep looking back at you know, textbook front cover or something like this, or looking at Wikipedia or something, then you can just remember this very simple and elegant proof. Suppose I want to know, well, what's the formula for, say, cosine of theta plus alpha, where theta and alpha are two angles? There is a nice formula for that. Same, one, same thing for sine of theta plus alpha. And using Euler's formula, you can get both of them for free using the basic properties of algebra. What you do is you consider e to the i theta plus alpha. Well, on the one hand, you know, e to the i times anything is equal to cosine of that thing plus i times sine of that thing. So that's going to be cosine of theta plus alpha plus i times sine of theta plus alpha. On the other hand, you can distribute the i. So that's e to the i theta plus i alpha. And you can even break that sum up in the exponent into a product. You can say, well, that's e, e, i theta, i alpha, just like that. But again, applying Euler's formula, what's that? What's e to the i theta times e to the i alpha? That's equal to, well, e to the i theta by itself is, by Euler's formula, cos theta plus i sine theta. And the e to the i alpha by itself is cos alpha plus i sine alpha. So now let's just foil this thing out. Cos theta, cos alpha. Sorry, not plus, times. Cos theta times cos alpha. Cos theta plus i sine alpha. So plus, let me just pull the imaginary number out front. Cos theta sine alpha. Plus i sine theta cos alpha. Plus i sine theta cos alpha, and finally the last terms, i sine theta, i sine alpha. That's going to be i squared sine theta sine alpha, right? i times sine theta times i times sine. This is i squared. i squared is negative 1. So that's minus. We'll just drop the i squared and put a minus sign. Sine theta sine alpha. Now what you'll notice is I have two real terms here and two imaginary terms. Let me lump these things together. The real term here is cos theta times cos alpha minus sine theta times sine alpha. And the imaginary term, I'm going to factor out an i here, is cos theta sine alpha plus sine theta cos alpha. There's too much red here. Switch to another color. All right, but look at what we found here. This complex number, real plus imaginary, is equal to this line, which is equal to this line, which is equal to that, 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 which eventually equals this. So these things are all equal. So in particular, this number equals this number. But they're two complex numbers. If they're equal, then their real parts have to equal each other, and, and their imaginary parts have to equal each other. The x, the x coordinate has to equal each other, the y coordinate has to equal each other. So in particular, that tells us that cos theta plus alpha 
must be equal to cos theta cos alpha minus sine theta sine alpha because they're both the real part of this complex number. And similarly, looking at the imaginary parts, sine of theta plus alpha had better equal this thing. Right? Sine theta equals this, which is uh, cos theta sine alpha plus sine theta cos alpha. So oftentimes you'll need this formula. I never remember it, but once you remember the proof and how it works, you can always rederive it with a quick computation like I just did here. So that's a nice application. You can also worry about what happens if you alter these things a little. Here's another thing you can do. So that's one nice little application. Consider e to the i times n theta. Say n is some integer, like 3 or 4 or 5 or something like this. OK, well, on the one hand, this is the same as e to the i theta to the nth power, right? Just because, I mean, you know, you can powers of powers multiply, right? On the other hand, just by Euler's formula, e to the i times anything is cosine of that thing plus i sine of that thing. That's also cosine of n theta plus i sine of n theta. Okay, so co e to the i theta, though, on the going in the other direction, is equal to cosine of theta plus i sine of theta. And we're taking that to the nth power. Okay, so what we've just seen is that cosine of theta plus i sine of theta to the nth power is equal to cosine of n theta plus i sine of n theta. And that's really the same formula. We're just applying the addition formula you know, to the same thing where theta is equal to alpha, and we're applying it repeatedly n times. But this is another way of deriving it, and it comes up with this formula. So this is a very nice and pretty formula. And if you remember the binomial, the binomial formula, it tells you that x plus y in general to the nth power is equal to the sum as n runs from, sorry, as k runs from 0 to n of n choose k x to the k y to the n minus k. If you remember that binomial formula. So applying it here, this is equal to, well, if we think of x as cos theta and y as collectively sine theta, so please don't get confused here. I know usually y is the sine theta, and so it should be i, y, but here, you know, maybe I should not even write x and y here. Maybe I should write two completely different letters, a and b, if you prefer. So cos theta is a, i sine theta is b, so this is telling us this is equal to the sum as k runs from 0 to n, of uh, n choose k cos theta to the kth power times sine theta to the n minus kth power. Except I forgot an i here. This shouldn't have been sine theta. It should have been i sine theta. So there's also a factor of i to the n minus k here too. So see where I can put that here. theta times i to the n minus k is equal to this quantity is equal to that. And so you can simplify this nice and pretty and continue on if you like here. You know, remember that i squared is equal to negative 1, i cubed is equal to negative i, i to the fourth is equal to 1, and i to the fifth goes back to i and the whole thing starts over and over again. So you can write this out nice and pretty. Let's just do a specific example. Let's consider the case where n is equal to 3. What does this look like in that case? Well, we're taking the sum as k runs from 0 to 3. So this is going to be 3 choose 0 cosine of theta to the 0th power. But anything to the 0th power is just 1. So that's really deleting it. So really what we have is sine to the 3 minus 0 power, n minus k. n is 3, k is 0. So that's sine cubed of theta. And we have this factor of i to the n minus k, it always has the same exponent as the sine term, 
and that's i cubed, but i cubed is negative i. So that's times negative i there. Plus, when k equals 1, that's going to be 3 choose 1. Now we are going to have a cosine theta term, cosine to the first power, it's always the k. Sine to the 3 minus 1 is 2 power of theta. i squared, so times i squared. But i squared is negative 1, so let me just jump right ahead and put a minus sign right there, and leave it like that. And then we move over to k equals 2, and so that'll be plus 3 choose 2 times cosine squared theta times sine of theta, 3 minus 2 is 1, times i to the first power. And then we add plus 3 choose 3. Finally, we're at the end. k is equal to n cos cubed theta. And this is now sine theta to the 0, i to the 0. They're both to 0, so that's it. 3 choose 3 cos. So let's actually simplify this out a little bit. And I'm going to switch colors. 3 choose 0, anything choose 0, there's only one way of choosing 0 from something. That's equal to 1. Same thing for 3 choose 3. There's only one way of choosing 3. That's equal to 1. 3 choose 1 is equal to, well, now there's three ways of choosing one thing from three elements. And similarly, 3 choose 2 is equal to 3. So this really reads negative i sine cubed theta minus 3 cos theta sine squared theta plus 3i cos squared theta sine theta plus cosine cubed theta is equal to, so that's what's going on on one side of this, but remember all of that at the very end is equal to cos of n theta plus i sine of n theta. So that's cos of 3 theta plus i sine of 3 theta. And we can equate real and imaginary components. This is a real term, this is a real term, and this is a real term, so they're equal. So we can read right away that cosine of 3 theta ought to equal cos cubed of theta minus 3 cos theta sine squared theta, like that. So we get this one nice pretty little formula right there. And equating the imaginary components, i times sine of 3 theta is equal to, I'm just going to factor out and ignore all the i's here, it's equal to 3 cos squared, well let me just put the negative sine cubed here, negative sine cubed theta plus 3 cos squared theta sine theta. So we end up with another nice pretty little formula for what cos 3 theta is and sine 3 theta. So you can use this technique to figure out for any value of n instead of just 3. It can be 4, 2, etc. And you end up with some nice formulas there. So especially if you put sine 2 theta and cos 2 theta, they should be very familiar formulas that you've used in calculus when you were computing integrals. So these are just a handful of the interesting, fun little applications you can use Euler's formula for. And it's a lot easier to remember these proofs than all of the other complicated proofs out there.